All right, this is sense making for February 6, 2022, 2023. Look at that, wrong year. Um, yeah, so um, what I thought is, um, what I'm, I'm going to suggest a process, and uh, anyone feel free to um, make any other suggestions. Um, uh, so I have this agenda I thought we'd kind of go through and talk through it, see whether anyone wants to make any changes before we actually, you know, kind of start going down that, that path. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to turn on the uh, thing again, not this, the controls have moved around again. Which I thing? There we go, captions. Uh, transcript's already on. Is it? Okay. I, I caused it to be on. I don't know how that works yet, but. Okay. It's a mystery. <laughs> awesome. awesome. My favorite line from Shakespeare in Love. Uh, yeah. So um, the thought is just to kind of like go through and review the agenda. Um, uh, so, um, if does anyone have anything they want to kind of like um, talk about or any objections or ideas before I dive into the suggested agenda? Nope. Okay. Um, so, uh, I would, thought we'd just um, the upcoming experiment and act is just to, to make sure everyone's kind of okay with this plan. Just start out with four meetings. This would be the topic planning meeting. Talk about what we're going to do. This meeting may go longer than one if there's a lot of debate about how we'll organize ourselves. And then maybe two practice sessions and then a, a session to kind of reflect and uh, document anything that needs documenting. Um, and then uh, in this session, we like go through and kind of like finalize our topic phrasing, see if we can come to an agreement on that. Um, I, uh, the next step would be doing an optional pre-survey where anyone who wants to kind of, kind of talk about, you know, just spend a short period of time stating what, you know, how they're starting and what their, any biases, you know, just, just what, what's your starting point um, in this topic. Um, and also let us know if you, if you have any um, uh, specific um, skills that, that may specifically apply to it. Like if we had an, an infectious disease doctor in here, that would be good to know. <laughs> um, and then, you know, anything that you kind of want to see to come out of this. Uh, time to talk about suggested processes and tools. Um, and I have a few in there, but we can, can add more. Uh, here's an explicit time to, to kind of talk about hopeful outcomes or what, you know, what uh, artifacts we'd want uh, and kind of plan for that. Um, see if there's a, anyone that we could suggest to invite, um, either experts or just people that might be concerned about the issue or we think that would find it interesting. And then um, just uh, the async task is just a place to kind of list out anything that we may want to remember to do or to do after we can assign homework to ourselves. Um, a lot of this stuff may include some research, so people that want to go ahead and do that or we as a group can decide to do that. So that's my suggested agenda. Does anyone have any observations, changes, suggestions, concerns? So this is the agenda for this meeting. Yes. So we're doing two things. We're kind of setting up the process and then we're running the process in this meeting. If, if I... We're... So kind of three things. We're setting up the process for the next two meetings. Um, and right now we're setting up the process for this meeting. In a few minutes, we'll set up the process for the next two meetings. Okay. And then, the, and then that meta it's setting up kind of the meta process of the whole project, <laughs> at least the first experiment, and we'll kind of do it. So yeah, yeah. 
So right now, since we've never done this before, this is, yeah, agreeing on the process for the next hour or so. And then, yeah, that's the process for the main hour. So it's very meta. <laughs> Thanks. Anything else? Jerry, feel free to jump in at any time, of course. Of course, everyone does, should feel free. Um, so yeah, so if uh, if no concerns about the agenda, um, uh, I guess uh, there's not much actually to say about the experiment schedule, um, unless anyone wants to make it, any suggestions. Real quick, I, I think, um, I, I, uh, I can't tell, but I think there's enough parts of this meeting that it might be good to time box the parts of this meeting. Or, or if we free run, will we get to the right place at the right time anyway? Um, I, I think it's up to Jerry and I to cut things if they're going long. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd want to kind of stop and figure out how much time to spend on each thing at the moment. I think uh, time boxing would be good for future versions to have that kind of. Um, but we do have an hour and a half to get through everything. Um, so maybe a different question. What are the gotta haves out of this meeting? Um, I don't I don't have any answer to that or concern about it. I, I don't see a problem with us getting through all this in an hour and a half. Uh, okay. I mean, if we don't, then it continues on to a second meeting. Yeah. I, I think it's all, I guess I, I guess I'm saying in that case, it's all necessary. Gotcha. Okay. I think. Thanks. I don't think any of this is. So if we don't end up having a, a practice session for the next meeting, we're okay with that. If we have another process session. I think so. Unless anyone's concerned about that. Hank? Uh, yeah, I think we should actually, we have an hour and a half and we had a full week to think about this. So I would say uh, a gotta have at the end of the meeting is an agreement on uh, our process for the next uh, three meetings and an agreement uh, on the topic and uh, who's going to have what roles, wouldn't, wouldn't you think? I mean, otherwise we'll keep putting that off. Um, yeah, and and or that's I, what I thought I we would get if, if we. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what I was thinking we would have at the end of this, as as we went through this agenda. Is it? Are we missing anything in this to cover that? Um. um so yeah, that that's a good way to kind of summarize the um kind of what we hope to have but uh, but i guess what i'm saying is that uh, if we don't if we don't have that i don't um it's not a failure mode yeah i mean partial failure mode yeah so if, if this ends up going to two meetings to get that accomplished that's probably more important than trying to get it all done in one meeting unless we do find ourselves getting off track but i, I think that's just up to I, I like that open-endedness and I appreciate it. Um, a, a thing to do to kind of address the concerns, I don't know that I have them, but to make sure that we feel like we're at least oriented towards progress, maybe we could promise ourselves the next meeting. We'll definitely make sure to come out of it with, with uh, the deliverables or something, I don't know. I, I appreciate this call being a little bit open-ended and we're not quite in the place where we know how much, you know, we have to get done and want to get done, can get done, et cetera, et cetera. In Agile, we would have called this, uh, in Scrum, we would have called this Sprint Zero, which real Scrum masters always hate, but. Uh, I mean, I think it's a good goal to have it done by the end of this meeting. And so if we go to two, then and reasonably it should be done by the end of the second meeting. Yeah. So if anyone does sound like a good goal. See. 
works for me. Okay. Um, of course, here's the here's the place where it could really spin out of time. <laughs> is the main topic phrasing, unless everyone just kind of likes this is uh, this kind of phrasing. And and we do want to kind of keep it narrow to kind of masks and pandemic, or maybe slightly larger than masks. We can think of a different term than that. Um, but there there could be quite a ways to phrase this. This is kind of based on how Jerry phrased it. How would and then I I've made some changes to it. So this isn't Jerry's original text either. Um, but how would a healthy society address masks during various levels of pandemics? Is kind of the piece I added. Um, does anyone have a any other suggested phrasings? And maybe I can ask you to type it in. Um, uh, I, I have questions about. I'm not really good at typing and talking. Go concerns, um, and maybe for maybe now we can go into a round of raising hands to queue up questions or concerns or something like that. Yeah. Um, I I have one big one which is address doesn't say anything to me um it it's essentially meaningless um so it you know i i don't know how to approach the question basically um so another way to say that is it doesn't if i if i think of smart criteria um it's not really a measurable outcome Like, like addressing something isn't measurable, basically. Um, you want to suggest a couple of alternatives, Pete? Well, um, I, I'm I'm agreeing with I, you, but I'm trying I, to figure out add, what a better word. And that's okay if you can't. You you can't bring it up. I, without yeah, it. the the ones I can think of right off are are not the ones that I'm really interested in. Um, I I have a a second concern, by the way, um, which is um, I think where it says masks there, I think we want to say masking or something like that. Um, Sorry, what uh, was the suggestion you said? Masking, masking. a verb masking. instead of a noun, or like you know, an act, active thing instead of just an object. So, so then, um, you know, the, the questions I can imagine is why would a healthy, healthy society require masking? Or you know, under what conditions would a healthy society require masking? Um, or what? When the, the 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 I guess I guess all of a sudden I'm hitting something which which was kind of always weird for me when we talked about having this as the potential topic. Um, the the oddity is, I think, in a rational society, masking wouldn't be contentious. Um, people would say, you know, it's or in the way that seatbelts are contentious, right? Um, we get people around the fringes going, well, I'm not going to wear a seatbelt. But most people go, eh, OK, I get it. You know, the science says, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll just wear a seatbelt. And I understand why there are seatbelt laws, or I understand why there are helmet laws. And a few people wear a helmet on their knee instead of their head, but it's a very, you know, odd thing to do it's not a mainstream thing to do masking for for the u.s society in particular has been different where um we have a it's a it's become a debate topic a, a debatable topic you know um i understand why you might think i you should think that i should mask but i'm not going to because it it, it turned into a a, a dual prong topic there's the the scientific reason for masking, and then there's the personal liberty and freedom uh, reason not to mask. And so then I guess the question needs to address the fact that it's a split topic. And which one are we addressing? Are we addressing both of them? Or are we addressing the fact that there are two of them? And maybe that's the most interesting one for me. Um, why would, a, why would a, a healthy society decide to have two decision criteria for you know, for a fact-based choice, or maybe, maybe why would why would we have a fact-based choice um, for one set of society and then a, um, I hesitate to say religion. It's not quite religious, but a you know a um, 
uh, a cultural based, you know, I, I, I have a culture of, there are people who have a culture of not masking and that comes precedent to whether or not it makes sense to have a fact-based reason for masking. So I, I think we need to at least recognize that it's a two-pronged question and maybe an interesting, interesting thing for address is why there are two prongs and whether or not they should come back together or not. I think that's that's a lot of great things to think about. And then, yes, I think we'll go through the, the people um, to uh, see. Also, and just to mention real quick before Joel starts is um, anyone who wants to go in there and into this document and type in, um, I think everyone has editor comment act, then uh, type in other suggestions underneath here. Go ahead and just throw them in as we're talking. Joel? Uh, yeah, I don't have any particular response, I guess, to what Pete said, but um, I, I feel like it might be easier. Uh, like I think trying to improve the wording would be great, but it might be easier to like like identify what we mean by each of these words instead of like trying to replace with a perfect wording. Um, so maybe like address, you know, we could say, well, maybe uh, a recommendation is something that would address this problem or like a mandate or, um, you know, what kind of recommendation, those are different things we might look for, I guess, to address the problem. Masking, like, do we mean, I think in the last meeting, Pete mentioned the different like types of masks um, so maybe we could clarify some options there, various levels of pandemics. I, so I, I have very little knowledge, uh, about this, this topic. So I don't know if there's like a formal definition of those, or we want to come up with some, um, but yeah, I guess there's, uh, I might mention that, uh, clarifying seems easier than like finding the perfect wording. Um, I'll jump in. So I want to, um, I put in the chat rational versus ideal versus healthy society. And the phrasing for healthy society is imperfect, but intentional <clears throat> in the sense of a healthy society would still be split on a whole variety of issues and would have people in various camps, would have lots of politics, would have all kinds of crapola going on. I don't mean that a healthy society would be a perfectly rational society and then always agree on the fact-based thing. And I want to make room in the question for cultural, vast cultural differences. Um, so Pete, for me, your question floats down into, hey, um, how, how would a healthy society address differences of opinion about masking, period? And there's like, woo, that's a really lovely big sub-question <clears throat> to the whole issue that then takes us, it takes us into all those different kinds of things. Um, and one of the things that I'm hoping our question opens up as a path of discussion is when there is a large segment of the population intentionally rising up against <clears throat> common sense and goodwill and facts and whatever, how would a healthy society deal with that group of people so that the best, and I hesitate to use the worst, the, the word best, but so that a great outcome still happened despite that. And, and then words like mandate might in fact vanish from the best possible policy because mandates cause people to just buck up and go, no way, Jose, I'm never doing that <clears throat> and cause people to push away. And I don't know, I think that's part of our discussion. And, and so I'm interested in the discussion containing not just the facts about uh, when and how masking works. And even Pete, as you raised really wonderfully, what do you mean mask? Uh, do you mean respirator? Do you mean mouth cover? Do you mean face? Uh, <clears throat> I've forgotten what the word is. <clears throat> um, face cover, something like that. Like, like even understanding when you've got a mask in your hands or and when you don't is a crucial part of that discussion too. So I, I'm trying to figure out how to how to have a broad enough umbrella question that it lets us talk about all those things and and sense do them each in turn. Yeah. Um, so I. Yeah, my, I guess, I guess we are trying to find the boundaries of the conversation um, uh, that we're going to have in the other meetings. And I, I, um, I, I agree with Pete that there's two those two factors, but I think there's 
a lot more than that. And I would rather not narrow down that narrowly in the conversation. Um, so that's why address is vague. It's like, uh, uh, we don't, we don't have, we're trying to list out what the problem is and, and maybe that's a better thing to do is the list of problems saying is something effective, you know, during the 2020 pandemic, you know, there was a lot of disagreement on masks and a lot of um, inconsistency in government responses on that. And, um, uh, but that's kind of like, well, that, that's naming out some specific issues, um, but I, I think there's more than that. And I, I'm not, um, uh, I wanted to leave, that's why address, because address could be, you know, we don't say anything. Address could be, we mandate it all the time. You know, it, it's, it is, it's, it's intentionally vague because I don't want to start us off with a bias towards any specific action or inaction. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I guess I, I I think some of those are getting a bit like requirements to wear a mask is 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 a very small slice when it could just be, you know, suggesting wearing, you know, you know, if we're giving out good science and people are supposed to do it or, you know, require it in some circumstances or in none. So um that's my thought. I still kind of right now I feel like the the proper kind of level is maybe maybe phrasing the question more as a this is the problem we're trying to solve but I don't have a good suggestion for that yet so I'll keep thinking but um, let me put my hand down Wendy the floor is yours We are not hearing you, you're still muted. At, I think each of us had different contexts and mine has just changed. Um, so there's something interesting, I think, about the stability of the context for the people whose context is shifting versus um, those of us who are in a static context. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have different questions now being in a different place compared to the questions I might have had where I would be in my normal place. And that's just basically because I'm in a different continent and doing different things and having a different culture. And, and so the stability of the question is very much um, changed by those circumstances. So there's a sort of meta thing there about how stable is the question in terms of each of us. Um, and then I think there's something really interesting going on in terms of the, like a pre-hypothesis piece, in terms of how important is it to have a question that everyone agrees on, because I think it, we will actually have some underlying assumptions in there that aren't voiced. So it actually won't be a stable question, even if we think it is. I think it's actually more interesting to circle back and saying, are we still answering the same question? Um, and that will tell us something that's not content, but it's more about mm -hmm. the process and how much you can agree on the question being the question at the beginning. So my, I guess my point is that the stability is an artificial thing, A, because we can't say all the things that are true for a particular context, and B, because of the first thing, we new things will occur to us that wouldn't be considered by the question which we thought we were all addressing. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy, given the criteria you're saying right now, what do good questions look like? What do, do good you, questions out, look out, like? Out of, out of any context, doesn't have to be for this context, but what, do, what is a um, really great question? Um, I guess my point is, yeah, yes, I agree with verbs rather than nouns. And I think that um, the point you were making, Bentley, about um, you know, the idea of addressing, you've got so many different versions of that. You've got coping, managing, 
um, you know, attending to, um, let me see, anticipating, there's so many different words. And I think perhaps if we track some of those as we go along, we think, right, what are we attending to now? What aspect of that word, even though um, it's, it's really ambiguous, which is fine to say currently, what, are, what aspect of that word in all of its messiness are we actually paying attention to at this point? So a good, a question, a good question would actually question the words that you use in the question. <laughs> and you'd be able to track those and think, oh, right, now we're talking about managing. Now we're talking about coping. Now we're talking about being resilient towards. Now we're talking about, and we, we don't actually have to agree that the particular verb or whatever the question was, was perfect at the beginning. But we just notice how it's shifting. Pete, do you want to? You're still muted. Pete. Yeah, I have a mute uh, mute hand confusion. Um, Bentley, you have your hand up before me. Um, oh, I I didn't. You put your hand down and put it back up, or or your system did. So uh, if you want okay. to go, I'm happy to you. go though. Either way. Um, uh, I, uh, a couple things. Uh, one of them is added another section with an H2 comments and discussion about main topic phrasing, which I think we could move maybe some of the things that we would normally put in Zoom chat into the, the document. So they would, well, I don't know. So they would accrue to this part of the discussion rather than kind of scrolling away. Um, and in that, um, one of the things I, I, I don't know if this is, is relevant to this discussion or not, but it seems like kind of is healthy, how would a healthy this society address masking? One of the one of the weird things that happened um, was the public health, the public health policy or the, the people that, that talked about public health talked about restrictions. We're going to restrict you. We're not going to let you out of your house. You have to wear a mask. You have to blah, blah, blah. If, if those had been phrased differently, if it was like, we're protecting, you know, you're, you're protecting people, you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your family. The, just the, that messaging tone flipped and ended up in, a, in, in I think, arguably a, a bad place. So I, I hope that more of that discussion comes out in whatever, however we end up addressing whatever question we have. It's similar to me to the, uh, the climate change thing. Um, you know, it, uh, it was when, when we called it global warming, um, it, it makes scientific sense. And scientists who heard global warming went, oh, I get what that means. It means things are going to get weird, not that things are going to get hot. Um, and when we kind of like push that into climate change, it, it eased some of that tension, even though a lot of the damage from calling it global warming in the beginning was, was still left over. Um, so I, I think, I, I feel like how would a healthy society address masking? It's like, you also want to talk about how we, I, I don't know, how, how did we end up in this mess? Jerry, I really like your framing around how would a healthy society, I really like the intent of that. Um, rather than what happened, you know, it's like, okay, if we were, but then, then it kind of begs the question, I think, I think you've just moved the goalpost kind of, what do you mean by healthy society? Isn't the US a healthy society? Um, so maybe that's another problem I have with the way that, that, that this question is addressed. It's, you know, unless you define healthy, it's again, meaningless because especially the people who are anti-maskers would say, the US is a pretty healthy society, except for the crazy people who want to do masking, but we're, we're phasing them out, so it's okay. Um, uh, another kind of thing along with the, um, the languaging, you know, do we call them restrictions or do we call them protections? Um, another thing is the, a, a, a huge part, a huge reason we're in, 
ended up in this whole masking debate is that the scientific community misunderstood aerosols versus droplets um, in early 2020. Um, so there were a bunch of people saying, oh my God, you have to wear an N95. And they were saying that in February and March of 2020. There were a whole bunch of other scientists who genuinely believed with, you know, without any conflict in their head that disease cannot be spread by an aerosol. Disease always has to be spread by a droplet. And so the people who are saying that we should be wearing N95s are insane, scientifically insane, because they're saying something that's not true. You know, a year later, the science community had, had worked that out and everyone said, oh, okay, I get it. We can fit viruses into aerosols and aerosols are blocked by masks. And though then I get it. And we kind of shifted the majority of scientific opinion so that masking made sense. But there was, you know, there was a year between like February, 2020 and February, 2021, where the scientific community itself, communities, the aerosol scientists who knew what was going on the whole time, the uh, epidemiologists were like, I don't know what you're talking about because aerosols can't transmit disease. Um, so it, it makes me wonder, I, I feel like that is such a, a big topic <laughs> that talking about masking after that ends up reducing something. I don't know, it feels like we're suboptimizing our I, I guess as I, maybe maybe we're not so often. I, I don't feel like we're so optimizing the um, discussion. And thanks for letting me talk through this. From a historical point of view, um, that schism in the scientific community amongst real scientific credentialed, like well-meaning um, scientists, that is kind of historically a big, huge part of how we let slip the whole masking thing. So. Thanks. Yeah, so I, I, um, I liked what Wendy was saying about how it's going to change. Um, I think the topic will change, and I think we'll narrow it down further. Um, I think the goal of the initial topic was just to give people an idea of what the conversation would be regarding. So I'm actually kind of wanting to even take a step back from what Jerry had said, and let's just talk about masking and future pandemics. Um, for, and for what it's worth, that's kind of my number three. Um, and I, I missed why, Jerry, I'd be interested to hear why you think uh, question three narrows the topic. Um, because question three is only about societal issues. Like question three specifically says, what are some of the societal issues? That's really narrow. I mean, societal issues are really important that here, but that feels that, to me like healthy society address and societal issues are synonyms. Not at all. Um, for me, healthy society address means, hey, here's science. Let's look at the facts in the science and how do we communicate the facts in the science and how do we negotiate the facts in the science in some transparent and credible way to bring everybody on board? Where what are some of the societal issues? It's like well, some societies are unhealthy, some societies are healthier-ish, maybe. And I don't know how to answer that question even. I mean, I can, I can I, surface so some I, of I get these questions. Um, uh, the healthy society addressing carries none of the connotation that you've, you've got for it, for me. So uh, that's why I was explaining what I meant by healthy versus ideal versus rational society earlier, because I realized it was vague, like address is vague. But I'm comfortable, I'm personally comfortable with healthy and address <clears throat> because I think the US is a really unhealthy society and we've just proved it. We just showed what a shit show we have. And despite the fact that we kind of muddled through sort of okay, considering what other countries did, blah, blah, blah. And the reason I'm suggesting a framing of what would a healthy society do, not an ideal society do, <clears throat> is to make room for all those discomforts and disjunctures and arguments and debates on the science side and on the culture side. And in fact, the intentional undermining of science and facts and evidence and authority and government and all that kind of stuff. I'd love for that to be in it. That may make the topic too large. Okay. I, but, I feel but, like you've, you're, I feel like you're playing both sides of a, of a, so you said healthy society. I want to address 
cultural concerns. But then when you you went into you know uh, what healthy means, here's the science. Let's look at the facts. How do we communicate the facts? How do we negotiate facts? You're you and I would agree that the U.S. is a is an unhealthy society. Um, I believe the 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 core issue is that you and I have a different um, a, a different understanding of what healthy means. And that we think healthy and science, you know, fact-based are the same thing. I know, I know in my life, there are people who think that a healthy society um, uh, follows, follows a particular God and has cultural ways of, of uh, resolving, you know, resolving issues like this. You go ask one of the speakers to God what, you know, what God says. And that's healthy to them. So I, I feel like saying healthy society is, it's, it's hiding a bunch of stuff, a, a bunch of assumptions that you think about health that many people are not going to agree means health. Yeah, and, and then that means that the whole discussion is, you know, hiding in the, you know, the, the real question you know, the chicken and the egg question or something is, is actually, you know, are we talking about your kind of healthy or somebody else's kind of healthy? Right. Just, just to narrow it down a little bit is that we're, we're just, there's a lot of different people in the world. We're just worried about the people that are here in this meeting and their understanding. And I think if we have disagreements on what healthy means, I think that's okay to move forward with regardless of whether it's science or not. But the main thing is that we're not this we're not worried about how this phrase is perceived by people outside of this group. because uh, that's too much to to negotiate. Right. In my opinion. And and I'll add um the way Molly Melching reduced female genital mutilation in West Africa was not through showing the science to people. It was by going to the Imams and saying, hey, where is this in the Quran? And the imams were like, well, shit, it's not in the Quran. Okay, maybe we can change it. And that was a completely different avenue for achieving healthy outcomes for a bunch of women who were being mutilated. Um, and I, 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 so I'm, I'm interested in the question, allowing for those kinds of solutions to show up as we sense do toward what a reasonable, useful policy or, or set of guidelines might be for a society. Go ahead, Hank. You're muted right now. Sorry. Uh, I do like this uh, conversation a lot. Uh, I've been making some of my own meta comments in, in the chat. And the last one I put in is, isn't the healthy society, society that accepts and respects all the definitions of what healthy means that's related to what you were saying, Pete, uh, people who think following any of the many religions that are followed uh, is healthy and people who think that uh, uh, respecting the exact words of the constitution is healthy as well as people like the ones on this call and in OGM who might uh, disagree with them. And in discussing it like this, I think we're already on our way to a sense making and, and as a prerequisite to sense doing. So uh, terrific conversation, uh, a lot of points being made and uh, yeah, let's keep going. Stacey, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, I think at some point it's going to be really important to go back to what was what Pete was saying and figure out where the confusion was in the scientific community. Because when we look at this question, there's a difference between people that are against masking because they don't believe it works anyway, or people that are against masking and they know it works. So Stacey, your voice just me, cut out. I think you were saying more. Once, 
there you go. Once, once, once I saw the agreement sign, I knew I said enough. So, so I stopped. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. And from kind of what Hank said that we've already kind of started since making. And so I think we need to get through the other kind of Um, uh, you know the other things we have to do in order to to move forward on the progress process. Um, so maybe rather than coming to an agreement on a phrasing, uh, we should go on to, you know, the the other parts of the agenda, and we can come back if, you know, does anyone mind if we skip this bit and. Try some of the other pieces. Okay. Um, so uh, let's, you know, I, I'd like to do these in a little bit of order because I there now that other people have suggested it, there's kind of priority. Um, although I'm starting to think about like pro suggested process and tools. Um, ideally, we would. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know. This is this is something that's still very un. Um, unsolidified um so we don't even need to have a suggested process or a suggested tool we especially the first first one we could just open up the floor and have conversations and see how an unstructured process works as far as sense making and have that be our first experience experiment um So I guess that's where I'm leaning if anyone has any, but if anyone has any specific processes or tools that they want to use, um, feel free to kind of either, either state them or, or, um, or to suggest them anywhere in the process. Okay. So one of, one of my sort of ongoing questions is what are good frameworks to use for the different questions we're addressing? And I'll point here to uh, CDE versus, well, I'm forgetting what the other one is. I'll, I'll find them and basically, um, hold on, let me, let me actually find it. Um, so CDE is containers, differences and exchanges from Glenda Oyang and the Human Systems Dynamic Institute. Then there's DSRP, which is distinction systems, relationships and perspectives from the Cabrera Research Lab. Uh, Scott Mooring is a big fan of theirs. And there's, the, and then, there's a whole bunch of other ways to do analytics or, or other sorts of things on a situation. I am just no, no expert on those kinds of things. And I'm very curious about those things and how frameworks can sometimes really help clarify a discussion and sometimes completely um, hijack and screw up a discussion. And I've been in a couple meetings where the day's framework did not allow good ideas to show up in the conversation. And I was angry at the end of the day. Um, and and so so I say that the process is sometimes a risky a risky gamble because some processes really kind of screw up the pursuit or the quest against the question. And anybody with expertise on this or suggestions on how to do it, which is the reason I said in the chat, maybe a, an interesting thing to do would be to compare and contrast different process methods uh, as we address this question together. And and we don't have sort of time to do that, but that's a really high, uh, it's a high order question for me, because I think it would Im improve collaborative inquiry to have at hand a lovely set of frameworks to apply to questions. And then, and then in fact, uh, maybe chat GPT can, you know, we could ask chat GPT, how would, what is a DSRP analysis of masking, uh, of the masking controversy around coronavirus look like? And and if DSRP can give us a starting point on that, that's really pretty cool too. Um, interesting set of uh, potential tools, Jay. Um, the the one that came to my mind was uh, Conklin's dialogue mapping, which. Uh, which I thought might be like higher level than CDE or DSRP, but I, I think actually it's not really. It's just a, a different way of, of doing it. So from a process standpoint, we could spend a lot of time 
looking at potential tools. Um, I was looking at participedia.net. The they have you know hundreds of processes and tools and examples. Um, so after kind of looking at that, looking at you know the broad spectrum of everything that's going on, my my thought was I'd rather kind of dive in and explore tools as we're finding problems in our dialogue. Um, So that's kind of where where I left it. Um, I I would I would like to have the group kind of make these suggestions, and we could even randomly pick them just as an experiment. Um, I don't know what do other people think about that. Do we need it? Did, is there a feeling of the need that we need that we that we'd benefit from starting the process with a process? We'll have time, hopefully, to experiment with several things throughout time, but. Um, it was really just a throw out to even have, I mean, like we're going to use lots of tools, but as a group, um, kind of having a main tool, does anyone feel that that's necessary? Um, or, um, so we've thrown some out, but what do people think about? It? Jerry mentioned he's happy to wander forward without a process at the beginning. Um, I'd like to, um, I'd like to make a distinction between Miro, um, as, with Miro and uh, like a, a schema like CDE or DSRP or dialog mapping. Um, so there's there's kind of like a substrate tools like Google Docs or um, or Massive Wiki or Miro, and then there are organizational tools. Uh, which would help organize the way that we're exploring the information and could map to different substrate tools. Yeah, so I was calling those processes and Miro's tool as opposed to, so that was the, the distinction yep. in the gotcha. wording, the intent there, yeah. So we could say methodologies rather than process. Um, and that's why I think, it, you know, if we were gonna kind of choose one main one with the group, it would probably be a methodology and potentially a tool and some tools have built-in methodologies, um, but but I, I think for this first one, it'd probably be good to step forward without choosing any <laughs> and just see where a good old conversation goes. Um, I, it's still, um, yeah, and so uh, maybe if we take a, a moment um, and uh, go ahead. If anyone has any kind of like hopeful outcomes out of this, invite you to type it in the doc. Or if anyone wants to stay any say any out loud or give any half baked thoughts on things for the group to discuss about what you'd like to see as an outcome of this. There, there are two classes of outcomes, right? One of them is a, a particular exercise masking and then there's an overarching um, outcome from the exploration of uh, sense making with exercises by doing exercises yeah i think either both um probably more focused on this specific four meeting exercise um But but meta also to understand what we hope. Yeah, so let's let's maybe keep this one focused to this um, to this four meeting exercise, and then we also would want to talk about our our goals from general sense doing like practicing with tools, practicing with methodologies, practicing with other people, stuff like that. But maybe we should stay. But since this is a about this experiment keep it on the topic of masking or pandemics. Did I explain my hopeful outcome? Uh, feel free if you want to. Is it self-explanatory? Um, uh, Ambrose Bierce's Devil's Dictionary defines self-evident as evident only to oneself. 
Um, so as I'm approaching this topic in the spirit of sense doing with you all, I'm busy using my particular hammer, which is, or my ax maybe, which is the brain, to start to connect, you know, what would a healthy society, how would a healthy society address uh, masking? Uh, and and thinking through the things that we're busy sort of tossing around in the conversation, uh, moving them around a little bit to try to figure out, for me, there's, a, there's just this gigantic trust issue. There's like a huge trust issue that's very easy to not address and let slip around. And I think it's really important. So in my little particular sort of outline view of the world, that uh, is a big high level question, which then turns into some policy solutions, some suggestions, some patterns, I don't know exactly what to call them, about how to uh, how to create trust even when some parties in the conversation are predisposed not to trust whatsoever and some other parties are actually actively trying to undermine trust. And that is a thread and, and a series of issues that might be generalizable out of masking and into any other topic we might talk about. But for me, they need to be addressed when discussing masking. And so that's one branch of this outline and I use the word outline very hesitantly because I don't really like hierarchical outlining things. I like very webby uh, connected things. But but I'm picturing pretty easily a series of channels like that where one discussion is, what do you mean masks? Uh, you know, and and what is the difference between masks? And another just another thread, a really good thread down down deeper is uh, aerosols, droplets, fomites. How does this thing get spread? And how do we sort this out together? And then right next to that is, hey, and how do we explain that together? And I remember this wonderful video when we were afraid it was fomites. I remember a wonderful video where a guy put some, some fluorescent goo on one student's hand and then had kids play for a while and then ran a UV light over the room. And it turned out that that one kid had spread the goo to everything. Every, every, everything was basically covered uh, in fingerprints and handprints, including everybody else in the room. And it was like, if this is fomites, we, we got a problem here. Um, so all of that to me is details, but I can, I would like to see that the very beginnings of, of that kind of discussion and that kind of outline materializing in several different tools on Miro in my brain and anything anybody else wants to bring to the party. Awesome. Michael. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, uh, whether. I missed the point where I should have interjected this or if it's relevant to what we're doing now, but I'm struck by the, the notion of, um, you know, thinking in terms of the, the granular nature of the stuff that we're gathering in whatever way um, and using whatever tool, um, the importance of as objectively as possible, um, tagging them, labeling them um, in, in, uh, in an ongoingly sortable way to, I, I was really thinking about this a lot as I was listening to Pete talk about the divergence in the scientific community early, where if you were labeling uh, pieces of input and news and, um, uh, you know, different, um, uh, different articles, documents, um, papers, epidemiologist, um, uh, you know, different, different groups that, that might have um, been the voicers of this thing, or this is coming from a religious standpoint, or this is coming from a civil libertarian standpoint, or this is, stand, is both from a scientist and a civil libertarian, you know, whatever things that you can put on those things so that they're, they're viewable and sortable in different ways later on. So that it's not so much about saying this is truth or this isn't truth, but, this comes from this point of view or or includes this this facet sorry not too eloquently stated but that yeah thank you um i um i think that's a good 
thing to thing for us to think about when we're each doing our own individual sense making or documentation. Um, as we go through, um, you might suggest, you know, keep, remind us of that point and help us to keep our thoughts organized in that way. Um, I don't, I don't know that we'll um, actually kind of, or that there's a need to get all the outcome, potential outcomes that we'd want on this documented, but uh, I think this is a good kind of start and people feel free to add to this document in the coming week. Um, but also um, I'd challenge us to think about what's um, reasonable to be done in four meetings. Um, uh, certainly any of these things can be done if someone wants to spend a lot of time working on it. Um, and actually, some of these, probably not, some of these not seem like homework either. that um, would accrue to being able to work together effectively. Um, so uh, my last yeah, one, for instance, yeah. what masking, what, what do you mean? And, you know, Kind of a non-judgmental just you know here's here's different kinds of masks here's different kinds of ways people wear them here's well, the i think that of... will be i don't i don't know for that whether there's much homework um until we kind of like talk about it because it, it may be a quick narrow down it's like well we we don't see a value in discussing cloth masks anymore let's just you know you know, the, say that we're um, talking about N95 like, and above, if yeah. everyone agrees. I don't know if I, there's I, much of a point to discuss further. Well, if we if we use the word masking instead of N95 respirators or something like that, I think an exhaust, an output of this process would at least be a list of, you know, okay, here's, you know, cloth masks, surgical masks, N95 respirators, P100, you know, and here's the different ways people wear them. They wear them on their elbow, they wear them on their chin, they wear them over their mouth. They wear them over their mouth with lots of facial hair, they wear them over their mouth and it's well fit, and mouth and nose and it's well fitting. If, if we haven't discussed that, I think we have to discuss that. And then if we've discussed it, you know, it's exhaust that we should give to the world kind of. Um. I. I could see that the conversation can definitely go there. I don't <laughs> know that it has to, um, like uh, because like when like when you kind of brought up, we we might still be narrowing down the conversation as we go. Yeah. And if if we just want to narrow it down to respirators and above, and you know what's going to happen in the next pandemic, we still probably need to address the social issues of if you tell people to wear a, a respirator and you're not specific, they may wear it on their elbow. Um, yeah, so I, I'm open to that. And I think if anyone wants to do that level of homework, I think that'd be great. So, so that's the thing that I can imagine doing. I'm not volunteering for it yet, but I can imagine doing that in relationship with this conversation, right? And just, you know, we, we had kind of have, kind of have had to go through that. I, I guess I'm, maybe I'm reminding ourselves, my, myself, maybe, and, and others, Hey, we're going to be generating lots of of uh, in, incidental and ancillary information that's not core to our our you know not core, but it is a, a, around it, and we might as well like try to structure that a little bit um, instead of you know just I, instead of just rattling off what I just did, and then everybody goes, oh yeah, we're just talking about NF five respirators. If I took an action item to actually write that up for forty five minutes um, and have a list of pointers that's a value add because it's top of mind for me. And, you know, and then if everybody else could kind of at least, you know, review that and go, yeah, that's what we were talking about, or Pete, you missed something or, and then, and then also if we could present that kind of extra information, you know, here's a reading list of things that, that we didn't end up talking about, but you might be interested in. If we publish that along with the, the proceedings, you know, it, it seems like it's a win, win, win kind of. Stacey? I'm just wondering if it might be useful or interesting to, to first just ask 
how has your opinion about masking changed? And if so, how? Just to look for that group that actually have taken in more information and changed their opinions. Are you saying Just answering what? that question right now? Well, excuse are me? Are you saying during the, are you, are you suggesting we answer that question right now as part of the group or as no. one of the questions we address in the I'm meeting? just I'm just throwing it out as, yeah, just something to think about as a way to just separate things a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should keep that. Maybe we should um, make a list of, uh, I don't know what to call that, kind of a inspirational question. <laughs> is a phrase I, I can't get in my head. I think there's also some line of reasoning of how to communicate with people depending on where they're starting around this whole issue and even how to how to figure out where they're starting around the issue, which will be about how to communicate masking recommendations or whatever. But but there's there's a piece, piece here about that. And Stacy's question is a really nice opening to that. Sorry, and Joel, you're up. Uh, I was just looking at, at the outcomes. It just reminded me, I think, um, I, I don't remember specifically what you were talking about, Jerry, when you, you mentioned like um, getting more specific with questions um, and starting from like the high level one. I feel like just with the time, if we actually want to like come to some outcome in a couple of meetings, like maybe we can start at the top, but like we should probably choose like one or two specific questions to actually like focus on so i feel like there's just so many questions with the general question that like we, we might just jump around between and not be able to like focus on them uh, if i can reply I, I totally agree with what you said and didn't mean to imply we should start with all the hot top level questions what i sort of meant to uh, say and didn't describe well was the bubbling up of the bubbling up of the bigger questions in the natural course of addressing lots of different specifics. And so I, I think the more specific we get, the easier it will be to start to go, oh, wait, this fits over here, this fits over there. And then a tool that lets us move, Miro is okay for this, there are other tools, but, but something that lets us sort of bubble an issue up the hierarchy of how important or how do we address it, I'm not even exactly sure what, but but yes. And, and, and a, an issue like, what is a mask and what do you mean mask? is was one of those uh, and and do masks even help is another one of one of the very specific questions that that would be fun to address early uh, and and pete i can easily see exhaust products of this project being little shiny nuggets that answer a very specific question pretty thoroughly like really pretty well pointing to great resources out on the web and studies and whatever else with a couple conclusions as a tldr at the top and shebang uh, and maybe even written as a pattern in a pattern language uh, possibly, I don't know, but but I, I can easily envision that as happy making work product for all of us. Michael. Sorry, uh, I have a question about um, outcome that circles back a little bit to what I was saying before, but thinking about whether our goal is to arrive at a succinct conclusion about the issue of masking um, that that draws the distinctions we think should be distinctions or to use it as an exercise in in laying down a methodology for sense doing um, that might allow for different conclusions depending on what one's emphasis was in one's sense doing. You know, like make doing sense doing around masking can be done from a totally medical and scientific point of view, can be done from primarily uh, a messaging um, effectiveness point of view from a you know civil liberty purely civil liberty you know i that that this the desire to achieve 
an outcome in sense doing, I'm, I'm questioning that as being our goal as opposed to um, testing a methodology um, that, that allows for different conclusions and, and labels them more clearly. I don't know if my question is clear, but that, that, that's, I'm, I'm getting, let me just add one more thing, which is when you think about the Wikipedia entry on a specific subject, it is the summation of a bunch of things that, that allows for some say, blah, 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 blah. People in this, you know, pocket of, of the issue contend that blah, 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 um, with hope, hopefully as little like negativity, you know, ob as objectively stated as possible. Um, so, you know, I can see us coming up with a statement that does do that in a, in a smaller way on this issue. Um, but I can also see us working toward methodology more than conclusion. Um, yeah, that's my question. So my, my thought on that is that, yeah, it's um, a good observation. Um, I, I don't think we'll be able to come to a conclusion in such a short time. So that's probably not it. Um, and so I think what we're trying to do is do some sense making that, I don't know if I'd call it a method like it's not a generic method for anything, but it it would probably be some framings to help people make sense to kind of give them an accelerated sense making on this topic. Um, so it's kind of in between method and conclusion. It's kind of where I'm landing based on that prompt. It's kind of like if if you've made the process of sense making transparent, you've you've got kind of an artic, artifact and kind of a demonstration of how to do it, um, without maybe necessarily locking down to it's definitely an artifact or it's definitely a process. Um, Jerry. Michael, I'm going to assume you just haven't put your hand down. Um, one of the things I'm realizing is important for me in this discussion, maybe not for others, is modeling what different communities' opinions about masking are or appear to have been um, so that we can kind of connect that back to how to approach those communities, uh, whatever else it is. But, but, uh, but one of the things for me that's different about sense making in general and sense doing in particular relative to something like Wikipedia, which just, and this is what just brought it up in my mind, is that Wikipedia has neutral point of view and is about facts and other kinds of things. And that's, and I love that, but it doesn't allow for opinions or narratives uh, to be posted or published in Wikipedia. That's, that's not a part of Wikipedia and a piece of this sense-making blob cloud above Wikipedia and the web is meant to be about those narratives and what to do. And, and, and I think a really interesting way to understand how to communicate with or address different communities with substantially different points of view, like, oh my gosh, masks cause carbon dioxide to come back into your body and they're terrible for your health, it was, a, was a narrative, right? And, and I think modeling that uh, is as part of our little argument tree or whatever other model we come up with for, for how to manifest this would be important. Excellent. Um, maybe we should take a moment and just brainstorm if there's anyone else we would want to try to invite. Um, Wendy has, I think, put someone down here. Yep. And then Wendy, your hands up as well. So we'll chat about anything. So, having, I guess, um, 
taken on sense making at a sort of high study level what became really important I think was to be able to use a fairly consistent approach either using narrative or patterns to shake up any particular study point as far as the perspective goes and chasing the content almost becomes nonsensical because every time you change the perspective you change what is expressed it, and being able to see the differences in them only happens when you really um, take a series of different perspectives and then looking looking at the differences between them because you used a process that was um, something you recognised had a, a certain steadiness to it. So, um, yeah, you'll never get to a stable question and you'll never get to a stable perspective. Just comparing them is pretty much the right approach and I wouldn't go to content, I'd definitely go to process. Um, anyway, there's quite a lot that I could add in there. Um, and I think probably cycles of taking perspective, shaking it up, then saying what was it that we did just then and how is that different from the next one that we do? And then after a while, you just get better and better at understanding what it is that you're using as a process to um, come to a some sort of sitting place, if you like, around a collective of perspectives. But you, you put another two or three in, you shift again, and you start to recognise when you're starting to get a bit too stable and you're not actually going sort of sideways enough or up or down. So um, Myro probably will help you with that because you'll start to see whether you're looking at, you know, scientific ones or societal ones or some other starting point that's just a little bit too consistent. Um, and if you've got, you know, five, seven, ten people on a call, you'll start to see where you're just getting a bit too locked down in the content. Anyway, there's a model I could show you that I use, that I developed, um, but there's lots of other ways of doing it. And Pete, you suggested a couple, DRSP, I think it was, but versions of that. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, I won't stay on this call for too much longer because it's sort of getting a bit late for me, but I'm glad that I've been able to join in. Thank you, Wendy. Um, yeah, I think those are great points. Um, I did want to add to that that um, uh, I think little that there are little nuggets of content that you can see kind of commonalities and that might be an interesting thing to kind of collect um, things that seem to be going across several perspectives um, or are in conflict. Um, but yeah, to remember that you, we can't really get too um, locked into content, the reminder. Um, and yeah, I invite you if, um, to, share with us any links you have to that content or in one of the meetings. Uh, I'm sorry, not the content, but to your process. Um, I think that'd be helpful. We are uh, getting kind of close to the end, got about um, 13 more minutes. Um, uh, I thought we were going for an you, hour. So. <laughs> uh, I think at the end of the last meeting, we said an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought it would be all the whole time, but sorry, I, I interrupted you, Bentley. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, I, I, I would love to have a good hashtag for both the overall exercise and the, which may, may be the overall activity project and probably the, uh, the exercise, each exercise. Or use in. Uh, so uh, my hope Twitter. is that uh, we'll we'll have output from this that gets published um, on, you know, wherever Twitter, Mastodon, uh, Medium, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, 
and then and then not only is there the official output but you know here's a blog post from pete um you know i'm working on since doing masking you know and these are this is what came up for me or this is what i here's uh you know here's a list of web resources about masking or whatever right great idea and th that gives us a way to collect up any posts we put any place. Um, I've been doing some YouTube shorts, which are 60 second U vertical YouTubes. Um, and I like hashtag get you seen there. So yeah. it's useful. And, and, and whatever medium we use to communicate out any of the nuggets that come out of this process will be really useful. Um, and I'm, maybe we could use the last 10 minutes to sort of set agenda for next call and, and figure out some expectations. I, I, I think this was a really productive call. I really enjoyed this conversation. I think we turned over a lot of stuff we needed to turn over. Yeah, we don't, uh, I, I, I think uh, even though we didn't come to an agreement on the actual phrasing. Um, I think as we talked more about the phrasing, we got more and more into the discussion. Um, so I don't, I don't see much of value in um, continuing that meta discussion to dive into it. So I, I don't know. Everyone else can kind of weigh in or give concerns if they disagree. I was thinking we should go ahead and just weigh into the topic uh, in the next call and um, uh, maybe go ahead and uh, do this optional pre-survey really as, you know, a starter survey <laughs> rather than a pre-survey. Um, and in, it included um, Stacy's suggestion on, you know, has your opinion changed about mass game? Maybe we should reset it up to like 60 seconds or something. Do we want to um, do this as a quick Google form? Or do we want to just post them in here somehow? I mean, it's really pretty simple to do a Google form I could. I was just thinking verbally in the next the beginning oh. of the next meeting. Oh, okay, um, that's good too. Unless, unless, uh, although written is, you know, might also be good uh, as homework or something to do in between. I'm fine either way. Um, and then feel strongly. Although anyone can feel free to go ahead, Stacy. Yeah, real quickly. I'm, I'm just wondering, just as a way to make it a safer space or to really test our own cultural biases, maybe just also including the negative effects of wearing masks as a brainstorming, you know, um, hard for people to hear you through it, you know, however insignificant they may be to acknowledge that there are other things just to create a different atmosphere. I think that's a great idea. So um, let's just start making that as part of the agenda. So let, um, we can do this anyway, but this is just my thought. Um, uh, um, Um, uh, I'd almost like to even separate that from the from the initial survey bit and make that be kind of our first topic um, just to kind of talk about the negative effects uh, um, so I'm comfortable leaving it um, as, um, you know, loose, uh, for the next meeting. Uh, but if anyone else wants a more exacting, um, agenda, feel free to add. And then Michael, your hands up. Whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, um, hearing, hearing what Stacy was, was saying, that 
you know, maybe in a way for us to um, come in with a little bit of a, a tag list might be a useful thing for next week. Um, you know, just with the ability to put that, I, I mean, it would be a great thing to do in a shared document, but it might be a useful way. I, I, I keep, I'm, I'm circling back around a little bit, I know, but I'm imagining if we had just the limited set, which we're dealing with much, much more than of every Journal of the American Medical Association article, uh, New York Times op-ed Fox segment on masking. And, um, and we were looking at those, you know, several hundred documents and wanting to sense do out of them how would we collectively sort them and how would we you know cite and and limit you know narrow down say to the ones that are are distinguishing between cloth masks and and n95s and respirators and ones that don't if we're talking about that um you know more about the things that are footnoted at the bottom of a Wikipedia page than a Wikipedia page. So the tag list is one thing I was thinking we might be able to attack. I, I don't know that. what you mean by tag list. Well, are you talking I mean, about article links or what? I, I guess I'm talking about if if we're talking about how to make sense and do sense from material that is out there and and see both in a forensic way what went wrong um you know that would be one way we would be looking at things that if you can see the op-ed that says that masks that science says masks are useless and you can point to that that also being from the point of view of epidemiologists pre you know the the point the during the first year as pete was talking about then that's useful um and discountable from one point of view but at least useful or if somebody's dealing with civil liberties or not dealing with civil civil liberties just having the the tagging ontology to identify the pieces of information that we're referencing. So it's not the links themselves, it's each link having what it is. Is it a scientific study? Is it an op-ed? What date is it from? Um, does it deal with mask? You know, it's the kind of thing where Pete might be the one who tags things as distinguishing or not distinguishing in mask type and somebody else might be on the civil liberties front and somebody else might be on the you know stacy might be saying well like i want to identify the things where people are talking about other reasons for not wearing masks you know so that it's a it's a way of uh community doing sense doing together without the individual judgments, but more objective um, identification of the different sources. So that's the thought, tagging. We only have about um, three more minutes. I do wanna keep uh, things. I, I think, Michael, I, um, I'm still, a bit confused by that um and i think that you're talking that you have a process in mind that we haven't even kind of decided is going to be one of the processes we use <laughs> um like having documents involved at all or links um which very well could be the process um so i think if you would remember remind us of that during the next meeting 
Um, and we can discuss that as part of our ongoing process improvements. Um, and so I encourage everyone to keep um, in the uh, in the sense doing thing and on this document, keep the conversation going about any topics that uh, that you think we we need to do uh, or any suggestions about the agenda for the next meeting, and uh, and we'll just kind of get together and continue winging it since this is the first time we're doing it, <laughs> and uh, and improve, improve the process over time. Any final concerns? All right, well, I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, take the time of a busy day to try this experiment. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bentley. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks. Thanks, nice call.